Hey friends, welcome to Let Love Rise. This is the new moon video in Sagittarius. And if you're new here, my name is Andrea Blythe and I am passionate about the moon, music, mindset, and storytelling. We're gonna get a little bit of all of that today. But first, I remember when I wrote my first blog post. It was back in April of 2021. And at the time, I was going, I was in this downward spiral after a really, really painful divorce. And I thought that if I shared my story, that maybe there were other people out there that were going through the same thing. And I was so humbled and surprised by the words of encouragement that I got, of support, and also people just thanking me for saying thank you for shining a light in this really dark place of divorce. We just don't talk about it openly um, enough. And so um, that encouraged me to create the, the Let Love Rise space. But now Let Love Rise has become more than a blog. Clearly, you're on the Let Love Rise YouTube channel, and so it is now a vlog. I create community events, and my passion, again, through the moon, music, mindset, and storytelling is to help people free themselves from stories that no longer serve so that they can courageously and authentically write a new one. And um, and yeah, I, I do this through... Um, moon and music. So let's talk about the moon, right? This is the Sagittarius new moon. So the moon and the sun, whenever we have a new moon, they are hanging out together in the sky. So they are at both at 20 degrees of Sagittarius. And uh, for those of you that don't know what Sagittarius means, um, Sagittarius is represented in Astro astrology by the centaur and the centaur with his arrows and or her arrows and the centaur is all about seeking adventure and wisdom and philosophy and uh, just like this really beautiful joyful spirit of travel and all these wonderful um Wonderful, you know, like dreams. I think about Sagittarius when I think about when I'm dreaming. I, I kind of call in on my Sagittarius spirit. So they're there at 20 degrees. But what's really interesting about this new moon occurring on December 12th, 1212, 12, by the way, uh, the last new moon of the year, which is like, whoa, <laughs> how do we get here? Uh, don't worry, because Mercury, the planet of communication, uh, is going to give us a chance to slow things down a little bit. That's right. Mercury on the same day is going retrograde, <laughs> right at the time for us to be gathering and traveling and doing all these uh, social encounters and engagements, the the planet of communication and the adventurous spirit are coming together at this new moon. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. Um, Mercury is in the sign of Capricorn right now, six degrees. So also, if you don't know what that means, or if you want to know what that means, when I say Sagittarius is at, or, or the moon and the sun are at 20 degrees of Sagittarius and that Mercury is at six degrees, it is helpful for you if you've had your astrological birth chart read or if you have a copy of it to look and see for you personally where were those planets the moment you were born that's what it is an astrological birth chart is a snapshot of the sky the moment you were born and that says a lot about the energies that you came into this world with what you're meant to discover and explore and how you're meant to show up and shine your light and um, <clears throat> so it's important to look at the houses because the houses are like a piece of a pie, right? Like if you can imagine a piece of pie, I mean, I think we're all in the midst of pie season between Thanksgiving and Christmas and there are 12 slices of this pie and each slice represents a portion of our lives. So um, knowing where this new moon is occurring or where the Mercury retrograde is occurring can give you insight into what is being, where the attention is being drawn to um, specifically for you to consider and to review and reflect upon or to plant those new seeds of intention, which is what a new moon is always about, especially a Sagittarius new moon. Uh, but before we can get to uh, to that that dreaming stage, Mercury is pulling us into retrograde. One more thing, if you would like 
to have your astrological birth chart read. Just leave it in the comments below. I'd be happy to help you. I do do readings. Uh, you can find it on letloverise.com as well, or email me at andreablythe at letloverise.com. And I would be more than happy to set up an appointment with you and go over your chart because it's been one of the things that has helped me the most as I have been picking up the pieces of my life um, as it dismantled between 2019 and 2022, pretty much. Um, it's, it's all there for you to hear about. Um, but going back to this new moon, it coinciding with the Mercury retrograde. So the Mercury retrograde, right? Like there's this idea of review, reflection, uh, rewind, revisit, all of those things. And 2023 actually began in a Mercury retrograde and will be ending in a Mercury retrograde. So I'm calling this video hindsight for a couple of reasons. I'll tell a story about hindsight um, and there's music with that. Um, but also because of this retrograde, it is calling us to review. And I think before we want to plant those new seeds of intention and dream, which I am all about, um, it's important to kind of clear out the muck, to look at the things that you have learned in this year of 2023. I mean, oh my goodness, what a year it's been. Astrologically speaking, it was one of the most momentous years that has happened since 2020. There were planets shifting that haven't shifted in years and years and years. I mean, Saturn moved into a new sign, Pluto, the big one, um, moving <clears throat> into the sign of Aquarius and then going back retrograde and then it's going to be moving back forward again. Lots of planetary shifts. The Venus had a huge story this year and Venus, the, uh, the planet of beauty and uh, connection and creation, uh, almost the entire summer was spent in a Venus retrograde. And so those are some of the astrological energies that really shaped this year, 2023. But for you, uh, and for me, what uh, and what our family does every year, well, let me tell you a story about my son, Ozzy. Uh, for those of you that uh, like to read stories, it is fully written. Uh, this blog post was written back in December of 2021, and it's called 2021 Hindsight. And 2021 Hindsight uh, is a... a explaining the inception of this new creation that our family um, put together around music. So uh, every year since my kids were little, like uh, for New Year's Eve, as many of you, uh, well, New Year's Eve with children is challenging, right? <laughs> it's like, well, what are you going to do? So I think my oldest son, Ozzy, at the time, he was two. And I <clears throat> said to my husband at the time, I was like, why don't we just invite our friends over in their pajamas and have a pajama party and we'll play some music and whatever. And so we decided to create a playlist back then. And the playlist uh, became the very first of uh, these series of playlists called the Jammy Jam, the N-Y-E-J-J, -J, the Jammy Jam. So we hosted the Jammy Jam year after year after year kid after kid after kid and there there were, were years where there were so many people and their kids and everybody came into their pajamas we gave away prizes for the best family pry or the best family pajamas or individual or most creative we had prizes we had gifts we had games we had countdowns it was a wildly good time and every year there was a jammy jam a playlist and the playlist included all like our favorite music from the year if we went to a concert that year it would include the song from the artist if an artist passed away i mean during this time period prince passed away um yeah uh, gosh why am i totally blanking oh there have been so many anyhow uh lots lots of great artists um passed away during the times on our jammy jam and so we would immor immortalize them or honor them pay homage to them so these playlists we had um going every year so fast forward uh to 2020 and our divorce was finalized and uh the kids and i did put on one final jammy jam uh, without my 
uh, with my then ex-husband at the time. And it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't the same. Um, we had a playlist. I don't know that I've listened to it, um, to it very often, but, um, yeah. So something had to change, right? Like that's how life goes. It was a good couple of years. I mean, I think we did 15 years of jammy jams, just hosting these parties in our home, in our pajamas and inviting friends to come in and to celebrate with us. And it was a wonderful tradition for our family. Um, I will be reading 2021 Hindsight Live on Facebook on uh, Wednesday, November, November, December 13th. Uh, I'm going to be doing my storytelling videos live on Wednesdays at one o'clock. So I, I'm saying this because there's the potential that I'm going to get a little emotional here as I talk about how we switched from the jammy jam to hindsight. Um, again, full story. I'll read it on Wednesday, live on Facebook. You can catch it live or you can catch the replay or you can read the story on Let Love Rise. And um, in 2021, uh, my son, Ozzy, was in a therapeutic boarding school uh, at the end of that year. And as he was away and as we were approaching the end of our year, like clearly there was not going to be a jammy jam that year. And our family didn't know anything different. They grew up, all of them, in their pajamas celebrating the new year. And um, my son wrote me a letter saying that he was going to do a 12-month playlist challenge. And he was going to pick a song for every month of the year of 2021. Um, and then maybe, you know, we could, he challenged me to do the same and his siblings to do the same, his father to do the same. And, um, and we all did it. And the hindsight playlists have become our new annual playlists. So what's different is instead of having one playlist, like our jammy jam, we all now have our individual playlist. Well, that particular year, Ozzy was living in this therapeutic boarding school outside of St. George in, um, in Utah, and it was going to be his first home visit in almost a year. And we all did our playlists. And uh, it turns out <laughs> that to drive the nine, hour, nine and a half hour drive from St. George, Utah to Boise, Idaho was about the time that was required for us to each go through our 12 year or our 12 song playlist and share the stories of how the year affected us and why we chose that. So um, that's the invitation here for everybody with this new moon and Mercury retrograde is to perhaps reflect on your year, reflect on this year of 2023 uh, and I do this by, I'm, I'm a journaler, <laughs> shocker. <laughs> uh, so I pull out my old journal. Sometimes a calendar is really helpful. If you have photos, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you have images, something that'll jot your memory. I actually got a text today from Ozzy. It was like, what were we doing in March of this year? <laughs> I'm sure he loved my response, which was, <laughs> Well, Saturn moved into Pisces <laughs> and it was tree fort and your sister was in France, but um, that's uh, what, you know, I, we're, we're still trying to jog our memory. So finding things, realia and things like that, that'll help you remember your year and then pick a song that you find represents, represents that year. Now, everybody approaches it very differently. My brother also does the hindsight um, playlist now annually, which is really fun because then we share our playlist with each other. And he is a musician like uh, my son, Ozzy, and um, their playlists are not always lyrically based like mine are. Mine, I'm a very... I'm very drawn to the lyrics and the melody and the sound, and that's primarily how I choose my music, but my brother and Ozzy are often about how the music makes them feel. So there's no right, there's no wrong, it was just like picking a song that represents whatever happened that month for you and can sum it up, um, remind you of something about it. Ideally, uh, you would carve out some time with a loved one if they created their own playlist to share the playlist with them, to talk about the stories behind it and the music behind it. Uh, otherwise, some people like to internally 
process? If so, write in your journal. Um, take it down or write every write out for yourself what these songs mean. And I, <clears throat> I have found it so powerful to go back and listen to these playlists, the, the Hindsight 2021 playlist. Um, I could still listen to it and be immediately transported back to a moment and a memory, right? Music holds memory uh, like nothing I've ever experienced. I'm sure you all know that experience when you're like, you hear a song that you haven't heard since sixth grade and all of a sudden you're singing all the lyrics. You're like, okay, how can I remember that? But I don't remember what I had for breakfast that morning. So same, the same thing, but music and memory, but what I find important about the music is not holding on to a story and a memory and a sadness because 2021 for me and my family was much harder than 2020. But that playlist is so powerful because from that, those moments, I'm able to extract, like really look at what that teaching was, right? It's our hardest it, life experiences, are our most powerful lessons and pull from that. Like, okay, <laughs> what am I going to take from this? What am I going to leave behind? Right? And this is the perfect time of year with this Mercury retrograde and with this, um, with this new moon is to think about everything that you've been through in 2023. What is worth leaving, leaving behind, leaving it here in 2023, being like, okay, enough of that. We've had a lot of planets in retrograde this, this year. At one point there were seven in retrograde and that was all like revisiting stories and cycles, the eclipse seasons that finished out uh, in October, that finished out a two and a half year cycle. I think it was a two and a half year cycle between the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses. What are you leaving behind? What old patterns? What old cycles? What is done and done? And in my language, I say, what are the stories that are no longer serving you? And hopefully the music can help illuminate that for you. And then on the other side of it, of course, is like, what are the lessons? What is, what is it that you gained from that experience that has strengthened you, that has grown you, that has helped develop you into the person that you are today, that you want to carry that forward into 2024? You know, what are you leaving behind and what are you bringing with you? So I invite you to create your own hindsight playlist. And once again, if you want the inspiration, the original, excuse me, the original blog post is um, called 2021 Hindsight and I will be sharing it live on Facebook on Wednesday. So, hindsight. Second thing is uh, another thing that my family has done, and this has been since the inception of the Jammy Jam, and this has not changed, is that instead of creating a resolution for the year, we have created um, a word of the year, just a word. Something, sometimes it's two words, but kind of an overarching goal, theme, direction um, that you want to really give a lot of your mind uh, attention to in that year. So this is also the perfect time of the year for those of you that do the word of the year along with me to reflect on your word of the year and ask yourself, first question, do you remember it? Has it been with you the whole year? <clears throat> Has it taught you something? Has it helped guide you when your, you know, life goes, um, what, what's your takeaway from the word of the year? And then secondly, this would be a great time if you've never done this before, but to start thinking about at 2024, what might be something that you want to invite in and that you want to focus in on in 24? I think I have my 2024 word of the year. I'm not going to share it yet, but at the full moon video in two weeks time. So we'll be back here. Uh, the full moon is actually on December 26th. So whether or not the video is ready for the 26th or the 27th, um, I will share my new word of the year because I'm going to reflect on it a little bit more. I'm not going to just jump the gun uh, because I am speaking it out, but I will tell you what my 2023 word of the year was, and it was shine. 
And that word has been a really, really great word for me. It has given me the courage to show up for myself and for others, even when I felt like I didn't know what I was doing, um, like an imposter, like I, you know, just I'm tired or I can't do this or why did I quit my job? What am I, what am I doing? And it's like, shine. You're here to shine. You're here to shine your light and you don't have to have it all figured out and that's okay. So uh, it's been a big year. You know, I turned 50 this year and uh, my friends uh, just helped me like sparkle and shine in the most glorious way to celebrate my actual birthday. Um, but it has just carried forth into everything that I've tried to create is really thinking about shine. So um, that was my word of the year. And if you had a word of the year and you wanna post it in the comments below, or if you wanna share about where that is in the comments below, I would love to read your comments and connect with you about that. So um, word of the year and a hindsight playlist. One last thing, I don't wanna leave this, uh, this little video without the song that I have chosen for this new moon in Sagittarius. So this goes back to one of the one of my favorite artists who I happened to get to see in concert live this summer, Jason Mraz. And this little guy <laughs> who's sitting on my lap, this is Jasper Mraz, um, his namesake, uh, obviously, is Jason. Uh, and the song is Let's See What the Night Can Do. If you listen, again, I choose things lyrically. If you listen to the lyrics of this song, it just speaks about an adventure that I am ready to embrace. Uh, yeah, just beautiful, beautiful lyrics. So take that retrograde to review your year. Let it sit with you. Take what you wanna bring forward with you, leave what no longer serves you behind and then um and then yeah create an awesome playlist that you can listen to into 2024 and i hope that you can share it with somebody and uh, if not doing it for yourself i have learned in 2023 is the most powerful form of self-love when you do something just for you so I thank you so much for being here, for listening to my hindsight 2023. Um, and hopefully I've given you a little bit of inspiration about how to finish out this year. And as I sit here in front of this Christmas tree, last story that I was telling the kiddos, I was like, I don't even know if I want to put up a Christmas tree this year. You know, I'm just so into the energies of the solstice. I'm really excited about that. And the kids were adamant that, you know, mom, no, we would like a Christmas tree at your house. And so uh, it was so beautiful last night. All my kids came over because Ozzy no longer lives here. He has flown the coop and uh, lives not too far away, but they were um, taking out the ornaments and decorating as I was making hot cocoa or listening to Christmas music. But do you see this one ornament right here? <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. So this is an ornament. There's tons of these on the tree. Like my my youngest says like, mom, this tree just looks like, I don't know, like we threw up all over it. It's just like such a mess. I'm like, no, it's our beautiful mess because it's all of our stories told in ornaments. And this particular one, my oldest Ozzy made in uh, preschool. Uh, no, actually, for scratch that, that was first grade. First grade, it's got his little picture right there in the middle of it and glitter all around it. And they put pretzels all the way around it, glued on these pretzels. And every year, I think including the first year I got it, he would just like nibble like one one little piece of of the ornament. And as you can see... <laughs> I think there's only, there are three whole pretzels intact. The rest have all been nibbled. And so last night when we saw that pretzel ornament, we just all just laughed and giggled. And I gotta say, it feels real, real good. And I know this to be true. When you plunge to the depths where you are questioning 
whether or not you want to stay in this earthly plane or not, as all of my family members did back in 2020 and 2021, some more seriously than others. And you hold on and you dig deep and you examine yourself and your stories and you start to let go of what's no longer serving you and step into what is and take the lessons and take that power and you start to rise from those ashes, the beauty, the joy, the gratitude that awaits you on the other side, words won't even express how worth it it is. So if my friend, you are in a dark space this Christmas, this New Year's, this solstice season, I have been there before. I've spent many years trying to figure out and make sense of my life. And I, through music, moon, mindset, and storytelling, am pulling the pieces back together. And there is an offer for those of you who are really looking for ways to recreate and rewrite your own authentic story to join me for my mindset program that is going to be launching in January called Rewrite Your Story. Um, I also have a healing playlist called Chiron Healing um, that has 35 songs to help you uh, navigate through grief. So I'll put the links to both of those uh, below in the show if you'd like more information on any of that. Um, please click on it. There's no obligation to join Rewrite Your Story if you just want more information about it because it is coming out and there will be more to come on that later. But the joy that awaits you on the other side when you dive into the depths of your dark spaces and examine your, your story and what's serving you and what's not. I just keep going, just keep going. That's what I wanna say. Get on your Sagittarius uh, centaur and keep writing into whatever you, that your dream life looks like. Imagine it here first and it will come, it will come. And last night, as we were decorating this tree, it was affirmation. Yes, indeed. We are rising from the ashes and it feels good. And I want everybody to feel the joy that I feel on the other side of the pain that I have been through. So thank you for listening. May you have a most joyous Christmas, if that's what you celebrate, a happy Hanukkah, a solstice, Whatever it is that you're celebrating, happy birthday to all the December birthdays, all the Sagittarius, Sagittarii, Sagittarii out there. Um, just wishing you so much peace, love, abundance, health, and, uh, and look forward to hearing some songs on your playlist. And I'll see you back here for a new video for the full moon in Cancer in just a couple of weeks. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.